Hi everyone. So today we are looking at how do we evaluate algebraic expressions. Yesterday in our last lesson, we looked at writing algebraic expressions. So we looked at just taking numbers and letters and putting them together and bam, we have an algebraic expression. We know that algebraic expressions have different parts. They usually have a coefficient, they have a variable, and they have a constant. And so today we're going to look at where the magic happens. We're going to start to evaluate or solve. So evaluate means to solve. Okay, so when we evaluate, we use substitution. And substitution means to switch in a number for a letter. So we're going to have a problem and it's going to look something like this. It'll say evaluate k plus 10 equals oh no it just says evaluate k plus 10. Sorry. Uh, when k equals 25. So here they give you the value of k being 25. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this 25 and we're just going to put it right here where k is. So we're going to put this 25 right here. And then we're just going to add the rest of the problem. So instead of now having k, instead we just have a 25. And it says 25 plus 10. And it does equal 35. Well, where did this 25 come from? Somebody or something gives you the value. So in this problem, the math people, whoever those people are, gave us the value of k. If this was like a real world problem, we would get the value from whatever, if this was like ketchup, and it was like the amount of ketchup packets we use when we go use like hot dogs or something, I don't know, then this could possibly change. Okay, all right, let's do another problem. Okay, and this one, it says to evaluate um, four times n when n equals 12. Okay, so we know right away that they tell us that n equals 12. So wherever I see an n, I am going to put a 12. So right there, instead of it being n, I'm now going to write a 12. So I'm gonna have four times 12 instead. This now, they go together. It's just removing the n, and what's behind n is a 12. And then I just multiply 4 and 12, and I get 48. So I could, I could evaluate this in a couple of different ways. Um, because 4 times n, 4 times n, could be written several different ways. So I wanna rewrite this out so you can see this. Um, it could have been written like this, 4n. I could have written it just like four times n. I could have written it like 4n. All of these mean the exact same thing. They all mean product.
Okay, so it's really important for us to remember that um, when we're looking for multiplication, it's one of these three things could be written here. Okay, so a multiplication problem could be any of these. All right, so the first step over here, step one is to use substitution. Substitution and then solve. So we use substitution, swap out the variable for the number, and then we solve. All right, let's go for another problem. In this problem, we are going to have two variables. Okay, so now we're going to have two variables. So example C. Example C says to evaluate N minus M. So you're going to have something that looks like this, N minus M. And you're going to be like, what? How do I subtract an M from an N? Well, they'll tell you something like M equals 12 and N equals 30. So your job is to use substitution to figure this problem out. So first, I have an N, and I know that N is 30. So where I see the N, I am just going to rewrite this problem with a 30. They go together. Behind the N, is the 30. Remember that this N is just a placeholder. It's like having a box when you were in elementary school. Um, instead of having the M, I have a 12 now. So instead of that, I'm going to put a 12. So let's use a different color. So now I have minus 12. So my first step was to use substitution. So again, I use substitution. I switch out the numbers for the letters. And now I need to solve. So I'm going to subtract. 30 minus 12 gives me 18. So I get 18. So my last step is to solve. Just matching up the number for the letter. Be really careful because if you noticed the M came first here but the M came second over here. So it's really kind of got to just really be careful and go slow and steady. All right, the next problem that they give us. This next problem. Okay, in this problem, they say A divided by B. All right, and they say that A equals 16 and B equals 2 thirds. Yes, you can have fractions in this as well. So we can have fractions when we are using algebra. Okay, so again, we're going to use substitution and then we're going to solve. So my first letter is an A, 16. So where I see the A, I'm going to put 16. So let's use the same color I did up here so I don't confuse you. So A is 16. So A needs to be 16. Again, it's still division. And I'm dividing by B. 
and B is two thirds. So my second was green. So I need my green. So I'm dividing by two thirds. Okay, now I'm ready to solve. I've used substitution. Now I'm ready to solve. I'm just taking the numbers, putting them in for the letters. Okay, but wait, we have a whole number divided by a fraction. A whole number divided by a fraction. What do we know about fractions? What did we do last time with fractions divided by fractions? We need a fraction here. So I need to make this 16 into 16 over 1 divided by... Two thirds. Okay, now I'm going to use keep change flip. All right, now we're ready for keep change flip. So I have 16 over 1 times 3 over 2. And I'm ready to multiply straight across. So 16 times 3. 16 times 3. So 8, that's 18. And 3, so that's 48 over 2. And that gives me 24. So my answer here was 24. Not all of these problems will be this involved. Like, that's a crazy problem, right? Because it was a fraction. If this problem had just been b equals 2, then 16 divided by 2 would just be 8. You would still just put your um, number in for the variable and just solve. Okay, and then you would just solve. Let's go ahead and hit pause right now because I'm going to turn the page and do another problem with you. Okay. Oh my gosh, that should have been a D. All missing wonder. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, you guys should be like starting to add up points. Who can get the most points finding missing wonders mistakes? Okay, A, B, C, D, E. Example E. All right, in this example, in this example, we are going to solve a problem that has more than one step, okay? So this problem says 3x minus 14. These are probably more the algebra type problems that you're used to seeing, and you're like, man, I really wanna see these ones more in action, right? You have your coefficient, you have your constant, you have your operation. How do you solve these problems? And then it says when x equals 5. Okay, so here's the problem, or here's the plan. It says that x equals 5. So where I see this x, the x is going to tell the 3 what to do, right? Well, I know that when I have a number stuck to a letter, I am going to multiply. I am not just sticking the number right there. This is not 35. This is not just 3, 5. It is 3 times 5. Okay, so you need to remember that this right here is multiply. Okay, you need to multiply right there. Do not forget that. Now we're ready to use order of operations and then we're ready to solve. So, step one, use substitution. Step two,
use order of operations to solve. That's it. That's all you do on these problems. So 3 times 5 is 15, and 15 minus 14 gives us 1. So we've solved. We've solved down to 1. You just have to remember that there is an operation right here. It's just invisible. So there's two things to remember. One, substitute. And two, that there is an invisible operation right there. Okay. And our very last example before I give you a uh, try it to do. Example F for finally. She's almost done. <laughs> All right. Says n squared. So here we're doing stuff from yesterday. n squared plus eight and a half when n equals two. All right. So again, we're just going to take this n and it says it equals 2. So I'm just going to put n equals 2 right here. It's all about the 2. About the 2, right? So this is 2 to the power of 2 plus 8.5 exponents. It's the same as saying 2 times 2 plus 8.5. 2 times 2 is 4. And 4 plus 8.5 is 12.5. Again, we're using substitution, we're using the order of operations, and we're solving. We're just remembering that exponents mean multiplication again. Okay, so exponent Do not multiply the 2 to the 2 like that. Or if this was a 3, it's not 3 times 2. It's repeated, right? Exponents mean repeated. Okay? Means to repeatedly multiply. All right. So write yourself a note there so you don't forget. So this is like n times n. Okay, now, are we ready for some triads? Are we ready? We are. We're ready for the triads. Okay, here they come. Triads. Okay, triad number one. All of these you are going to evaluate when y equals 6. Okay, so y is going to equal 6. All right, so here is your try it. Try it number one. I would like for you to solve this one. 5y plus 1. Try it number 2 is 30 minus 24 divided by y. Try it number three. Try it number three says y squared minus seven. And then try it number four. Try it number four. Um, try it number four it says one plus y to the third power. All right, go ahead and hit pause right now so that you don't hear me solving these. And then when you are ready, you may come on back.
All right, so I know that y equals six. So I have a y here. And so this is like saying five times six plus one, which is 30 plus one, which is 31, 31. Okay, how did you do on that problem? Go ahead and check yourself. How did you do? All right, try it number two. Try it number two says y equals, again, it equals six. So I'm just gonna drop down the rest of this problem. All right, and 24 divided by six, 24 divided by six is four minus 30, 30 minus four is 26. Whew. All right, you guys, woohoo! Okay, and we have six. Again, we have a y, y squared. All right, so we have six squared minus seven. So uh, six squared is like six times six, which is 36. And 36 minus seven gives us 29. How did you do on that one? 29? Okie dokie, ah, last one. Okay, last problem. Again, we have another six here. Oh, another y. And this one is like six times six times six, right? So 36 times six gives us 216 plus one is 217. So 217. Okay, sixth graders, how did you do on your work today? Okay, it's time for us to answer our essential question somewhere on our paper. Somewhere on our paper. Okay, I'm gonna answer it up here maybe. Answer your essential question somewhere. How do we evaluate algebraic expressions? What is something important that we need to remember? Something we need to do? What are the steps? Summarize those for me. And then put your understanding out to the side. Sorry, my dog. And when you are ready, you may head on over either to the Google Meet and ask for help or you may head to Big Ideas and start on your practice work. As always, I appreciate all of your hard work and your effort every single day and make it a great day.